In a universe of seemingly infinite scale and countless wonders, it's curious that the thing we're most hunting for is ourselves. To discover that we are not alone. Just 40 light years away, in the constellation of Aquarius, lies a tiny dim star. T-R-A-P-P-I-S-T-1. It's cold, ancient, and barely visible. And yet it hosts something extraordinary, not one, but seven Earth-sized planets. It's as if nature itself set up an experiment. Can life exist around a star like this? One by one, scientists have ruled out most of these worlds as being habitable, too hot, too cold, no atmosphere, no chance. But one world still holds promise, TRAPPIST-1e. And now, thanks to data from the James Webb Space Telescope, we may finally have a glimpse of its atmosphere. What we found is astonishing. Could this be the first true Earth-like planet beyond our solar system? Could TRAPPIST-1e host life? Join me today as we travel to the TRAPPIST-1 star system to explore the potential for life on its most promising planet. We'll examine new data from the James Webb Space Telescope that has pushed it to its limit, revealing the likely composition of TRAPPIST-1e's atmosphere and whether it could support life. That is, if the very star that offers the chance of life hasn't also issued a death sentence. TRAPPIST-1 is an M8-class red dwarf. Only a little larger than Jupiter, it's 1,800 times less luminous than our Sun. A difference like comparing a candle to a college running track floodlight. Although the star was first discovered in 1999, its full planetary lineup wasn't revealed until 2017 when it became the first and only planetary system discovered by the TRAPPIST Optical Robotic Telescope. This telescope consists of two parts, TRAPPIST south in the Chilean mountains and TRAPPIST north in Morocco's Atlas Mountains. They use transit photometry, a technique that measures periodic changes in a star's brightness to find orbiting planets. In other words, if a planet passes between us and the star, some light is blocked and we detect a dip in the star's apparent output. By taking multiple observations, the telescopes isolated the individual orbits of multiple planets around TRAPPIST-1. Initially, data analysis found only the three innermost planets. But further observations from both TRAPPIST telescopes and the Spitzer Infrared Space Telescope raised the total to seven. And not only that, but they are all rocky and roughly Earth-sized, making this the most Earth-like planetary system found around any star. If you'd like to know more about all the individual planets around TRAPPIST-1, I made a video about them, you can check it out. But with such a small, dim star at the center, is there really any hope they could be habitable? For any of these planets to receive enough light to support life, their orbits need to be much closer than Earth's to the Sun. In the TRAPPIST-1 system, the planets certainly are. All seven are incredibly close. TRAPPIST-1e orbits at only 1 13th of Mercury's distance, which means it could be tidally locked to its host star, with the same side always facing the star, just like we only ever see one side of our moon. This has significant implications for habitability, which we'll explore later. But more importantly, its orbital distance places it right in the middle of the predicted habitable zone where it receives about two-thirds the energy Earth gets from the Sun. That's why scientists are so curious about this planet. But light alone isn't enough for life to thrive. TRAPPIST-1e would almost certainly need an atmosphere. That's exactly what scientists have been searching for, using our most powerful space-based telescope, James Webb. The teams involved in developing James Webb were rewarded with guaranteed observation time. One group, the Deep Reconnaissance of Exoplanet Atmospheres Through Multi-Instrument Spectroscopy, or the DREAMS team, immediately set James Webb's sights on the TRAPPIST-1 system. The telescope is uniquely sensitive and precise, capable of detecting spectral signatures from the thin band of gas making up these planets' atmospheres, 40 light years away. It does this through transmission spectroscopy. As an exoplanet transits its star, James Webb measures not only the drop in brightness but also changes in the light spectrum. The telescope's near-infrared spectrometer, NIRSPEC, measures wavelengths of infrared radiation closest to the visible spectrum. Molecular bonds absorb energy in this range, and different bonds, like carbon-hydrogen and methane or carbon-oxygen double bonds and carbon dioxide, 
absorb different wavelengths. By measuring which wavelengths are absorbed during transit, we can determine if an atmosphere exists and if so, which gases are present. It's been particularly effective for TRAPPIST-1. The data is 10 times more sensitive than for any other system. Why? Counterintuitively, because the star is dim. A planet blocks a larger relative fraction of light from a small star than a bright one, making the signal easier to measure. Using these measurements, the team has already ruled out atmospheres for TRAPPIST-1c and d, but results from TRAPPIST-1e, a rocky planet about 0.9 times Earth's size, were intriguing. It appeared to have an atmosphere. That was enough for the DREAMS team to dedicate all their guaranteed JWST time to learning more. So far, they've observed multiple TRAPPIST-1e transits with James Webb, including ongoing observations in late 2025 providing stronger constraints. What did they find? We can rule out several possibilities. TRAPPIST-1 does not have a primordial atmosphere, one a planet is born with, dominated by light gases like helium and hydrogen, which weren't detected. These were likely stripped away by stellar radiation early in the system's life. It also lacks a thick, carbon dioxide-dominated atmosphere like Venus or a thin, sparse one like Mars, both unlikely to support life as we know it. Believe it or not, this is good news. So what atmosphere does it have? The big possibility, an Earth-like atmosphere dominated by a heavier gas like nitrogen with a strong greenhouse effect from water, carbon dioxide, or methane. An atmosphere with surface pressure around one bar, Earth's level, could transfer enough heat to the dark side to allow a global surface ocean despite tidal locking. If confirmed, this would make headlines worldwide. A September 2025 study led by Anna Glidden from MYT published in the Astrophysical Journal Letters analyzed JWST data showing tentative hints of such an atmosphere possibly rich in nitrogen and methane but low in carbon dioxide resembling Saturn's moon Titan. This aligns with NASA and Space Telescope Science Institute findings, raising hopes for a watery world. However, the data slightly favors a colder planet without a global ocean. Accurate data analysis is critical. Misinterpretation could mean the difference between a historic discovery and a mistake. If you're a scientist analyzing data, you can sharpen your skills with Brilliant, today's sponsor. Brilliant is an online learning platform for beginners and experts alike offering thousands of visual interactive courses designed by award-winning teachers and professionals from Stanford, MIT, Caltech, Microsoft, Google, and more. I love its science courses, but it also covers programming, math, and AI, tools to evaluate exoplanets or solve everyday problems. Start with foundations and progress to challenging problems as you improve. Back to TRAPPIST-1E. An alternative to an Earth-like atmosphere is high methane levels, creating a reverse greenhouse effect. TRAPPIST-1 surface temperature is about 2,400 Kelvin, much cooler than the Sun's 5,670 Kelvin, with more energy in near-infrared wavelengths. Atmospheric methane absorbs this energy before it reaches the surface, re-emitting it into space, cooling the atmosphere. For tidally locked TRAPPIST-1e, Liquid water might exist only on the star-facing side, no global ocean. But that's not necessarily bad for life. It could satisfy Darwin's warm little pond hypothesis for life's origin. Atmospheric modeling supports this. Simulations show that even with limited water or water locked on the dark side, TRAPPIST-1e could maintain a stable atmosphere. This might lead to Terminator habitability, where life exists in a twilight band between day and night. But surface water isn't the only option. TRAPPIST-1e is rocky. It could be an icy volcanic world with a subsurface ocean, like Europa or Enceladus. Some believe life on Earth began near deep sea vents. The same could happen on 1e. Wherever water exists on TRAPPIST-1e, life is possible. There's an energy source and potentially an atmosphere with life's building blocks. But one issue remains. Scientists can't yet rule out TRAPPIST-1e being a cold, barren, airless world. So, what could prevent a stable atmosphere from forming? The culprit is the red dwarf star TRAPPIST-1 itself. Imagine standing on TRAPPIST-1e. Look up. The star appears over four times larger than our sun, a deep red-orange casting a perpetual sunset glow. 
Red dwarfs are highly active, producing powerful flares more often than the sun. The worst geomagnetic storm to hit Earth was the 1859 Carrington event, a once-in-a-century event. TRAPPIST-1 likely releases a flare this powerful more than once every two days. You could watch solar flares arcing into space in real time. These carry immense energy, potentially stripping away any atmosphere over time, making life impossible. That assumes an atmosphere ever formed. Red dwarfs are incredibly long-lived. TRAPPIST-1 is expected to shine for 10 trillion more years, 700 times the universe's current age. Our sun has only 5 billion years left before becoming a red giant. That you might think a red dwarf's longevity gives life plenty of time to emerge, but their chaotic, energetic teenage years last longer. During this phase, planets begin producing secondary atmospheres, replacing primordial hydrogen-helium with heavier gases like carbon dioxide, nitrogen, and methane via volcanic outgassing. If the star's aggressive atmosphere stripping phase lasts too long, an Earth-sized planet might lack enough internal resources to build a stable, life-supporting atmosphere. If a planet's atmosphere isn't established within 5 billion years, it may never form, dooming it before life can begin. So where does this leave us? We may have an Earth-sized, volcanically active, rocky planet with life's building blocks, an atmosphere, and a magnetic field, orbiting in the habitable zone of a relatively calm red dwarf. Or it could be a cold, dead world. Let us know in the comments which scenario you think will be confirmed. We might not know until the proposed Habitable Worlds Observatory, launching in 2041 to search for life around sun-like stars. Until then, James Webb's observations are our best hope. Measuring light absorbed by a thin, gaseous layer around a rocky planet 40 light-years away is incredible. Scientists haven't given up. They've refined techniques using initial JWST data for greater precision. With ongoing 2025 transit observations, they aim to confirm carbon dioxide and a secondary atmosphere, a key step in the search for life on 1E. Perhaps TRAPPIST-1E and its neighbors will reveal a unique, inhospitable atmosphere, or one that could support life. Or maybe, just maybe, we'll find one like home. It's thrilling to find such potential for life nearby, even in an extreme environment. Whatever TRAPPIST-1's atmosphere proves to be, with recent Mars discoveries of formations likely requiring life to form, I can't shake the feeling that extraterrestrial life's discovery feels inevitable. The only question is, when? Like, subscribe and share your thoughts in the comments.